In this video, I'm going to show you how I design my featured images for blog posts as well as the YouTube thumbnails. So I'm in a program called canva.com. You just go to canva.com. It's a free program. You create your free account. And once you've got your account set up, they're going to open up this dashboard library that's the home page. So you're going to see where it says create a design. You also have custom dimensions over here. It's a little bit smaller and hard to see. If you click on custom dimensions, you can actually type in your own width and height in pixels as well as inches, millimeters and centimeters. I like to use pixels as that's what we go off of when we're picking out templates. So for example, the YouTube thumbnail template is already right here and it's 1280 by 720. So that's what we could type in here if we were going to create our own. Uh, but what I like to do is just select the YouTube thumbnail. So that's what I've done for my featured image on my blog articles. I use just the YouTube thumbnail dimensions 1280 by 720. And I also use it for my thumbnails for YouTube. So you can see my most recent designs right here. We've got my YouTube thumbnail design I've been working with for the YouTube videos. And then over here I've got the featured image I've been working with for my blog posts. And then I also make Pinterest pins for getting traffic to my website from Pinterest. So I've got my under 30 wealth website and I've got my golf website. So these are two different pin templates that I pretty much design off of. I just add a new image and add some new text and I pretty much keep the same layout and template each time, just like I do with my featured images for my blog and for my YouTube thumbnails. So I'm going to go ahead and click here into my blog featured image picture that I pretty much just keep using this template over and over again so that all my featured images on my website look very similar. So when you first choose the YouTube thumbnail, which we'll go back here and use this custom one. So we'll click on YouTube thumbnail as a custom template. It's going to start it out as just this blank rectangle. All right. So from there, what you're going to do is you're going to use the panel over here to the side where you've got photos, elements, text, background and uploads. I like to use uploads a lot of times. Uh, so that's where I'll go in and upload my own image. So in the example of this golf featured image, what I did here was uploaded in my uploads folder, a photo of Tiger Woods. And then when I, you click on one of these photos, it just pops it in over to the right. So we dragged it around until we got it to where we wanted it. And then from there, all I did was added a layer on top of it. So you can see that it's kind of faded out with this black layer that sits on top of it. So if I remove this layer, now the photo shows through. So to do that, I went into the shapes under the elements here and we go under shapes and then you choose the, the different square shapes or they've got rectangles, triangles, circles. Um, so sometimes there's even a recently used, but we could just type in square. And if you type in square, you're going to see the little square shape pop up here. So when you click on it, it's going to pop it over here to the right. And then all I did was dragged it so that it took up the entire, you know, full screen. I made it even bigger. You can stretch it all the way over here. It doesn't matter when you download your image. It's only going to download, you know, the actual part. That's the image here. So you don't have to worry about it being the, the exact perfect size at the edge. You can overlap it, you know, have that runoff that extra space there. All right. So from there, all you did, all I do is I come up to the race car, little race car flag icon, which is transparency, the little checkerboard. Uh, I set it to transparency 70. If I wanted to crank it up, it would make the background disappear. I could take it all the way down. If I wanted the background image to show through even more, I typically leave it on, you know, in the sixties to seventies, just so it's pretty faded out. That way it makes the text easier to read. All right. So next what I do is I'll add in this little rectangle around the edge here for the border. So again, when we type square in, you're going to see this outline one that also comes up. So I just click it on this and then I resize it along the edges, you know, so it gives it a little nice border. So that's step three. And then the last step is to add the text boxes in. So I've got two text boxes here. One's my branded website URL at the bottom here. And then we've got the actual article title that we're going to use to try to entice people to click on the article when they're reading my blog. So we're going to go here to the text tab and we're just going to click any of these. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. Um, once you click one of those, it pops it over here and then you can start typing in your text. So that's what we typed in. We typed in richest golfers and then it starts out black. So what we can do is come up here to the color wheel and we'll click on the white text and then we can come back here and you can drag it around. 
So now it's in the white where you can see over the black background, you know, that we've just made transparent so it looks good. And then from there we can change the font. So right now for my titles, I'm currently using the Alpha Slab 1 font, which is just some big bold font and I've got it set to size 48. You also have the option of picking from hundreds of other fonts. So we can scroll through here and it gives examples of how each font looks if you look at the different ones. So Oswald, for example, over the rainbow, Pacifico. So these all look different, but it's cool. You can get a preview of what they would look like so you can find the right fonts that work for you. And what I also recommend is sometimes it looks good to have two fonts working together. Uh, so if you had like the top line is one font and the bottom line is another font, sometimes you can play around with design and make it look pretty cool. Uh, but I just, you know, for simplicity, since I'm pumping out a blog post a day, I just use the same one font and I quickly, all I have to do is just come in here and punch in a new title and then I'll go here, I'll pull back my layer so that I can select my background image and then I'll just delete out my background image. I'll come over here to my uploads. I'll try to find a new golf photo that I want to throw in as a background and then I'll stretch it, you know, bigger than the box so that it fits pops in and then we tap on the the layer again to select it and then I stretch it back over the top. So because the background image sits behind, you know, this little outline white box here as well as behind my layer that's transparent, you have to move those things out of the way in order to be able to select that background layer which is your background image. Um, so that's one that's one reason why I have to pull this back to select my image before I delete it. And then later, once I, you know, put it back in, I'll go ahead and re-grab that transparency and close it back off. Now, if you want to duplicate and create different featured images, maybe you're trying to rotate back and forth between different templates, you can just click this copy button here, and that'll save your changes so that you can start playing around with, you know, another version if you wanted to try different fonts or different designs, and it keeps your original so you don't lose it. Or you can also go here under File, and you can just click make a copy and that'll actually open up a new browser tab where it's its own design. So that's the second way to, you know, make sure you save your designs and create copies if you're going to start making variations and changes so that you don't lose it. All right, so that's the basics of how I create my featured images for my blog post. That's the same thing I did out here for my YouTube thumbnail. So we'll go ahead and open that one up just to preview it real quickly. Uh, so for this one, I just used a solid color background rather than importing a background image that I upload. Uh, and then I just threw on some different text on top of it. And then I found these little shapes uh, that I created with lines. So I actually just went into the elements again and found these different uh, lines and I added them together to make this little L shape uh, that shows up on each side. And then, you know, these are just text boxes. And then I imported a photo of me. Uh, pointing upwards. So it's a pretty basic design. I've experimented, you know, with lots of different thumbnails. If you go back and look at my different videos, I like to change it up from time to time. So this is the thumbnail that we're rocking currently, and it probably will change again in the future. Now, additionally, a few other things to note. If you're going to use like the Pinterest template, they've got that here for you already. 735 by 1102. So it's a tall vertical image. Again, so that's what I do for my Pinterest images. So every time I publish a blog post, I come in here, I create my featured image for my blog post that shows up on my website. And then I also create a Pinterest vertical image for that same blog post as well that I can go upload to Pinterest and then I link my blog article to it. And when people are on Pinterest browsing, they'll find this image, they'll click through and then it takes them back to my website to read my blog article and that's how I'm getting a lot of traffic back to my website, building my email list and getting customer sales through Pinterest. So you can learn more about my tips on how I run a blog that makes money. I've got a couple courses you can check out as well. I've had people ask about. So we've got Profitable Blogger. If we scroll down here, you're going to be able to see all the different curriculum. And then we've also got out on my homepage. If you go to asknickfoy.teachable.com, you're going to find the one that teaches Pinterest if you're trying to learn how to get Pinterest traffic to your website. And then if you're curious about other ways to make money offline besides you know blogging and Pinterest, you can check out Real Estate Investing School, which teaches you how I buy rental properties and start earning income from rental properties to help me eventually you know, live full time off of my online income and my rental income, which is what I'm doing currently. Uh, but you know, I'm going to continue to build both those things so that I have even more security 
uh, so that I don't hopefully have to go back and get a job ever in the future. So that's going to be it for this video. Just wanted to walk you quickly through Canva, showing you that there's all these different templates you can choose from, you know, posters, Facebook covers, flyers, social media, blog banners. And then I also use the YouTube one for my thumbnails and my featured images on my website. Uh, so I pretty much just showed you the basics of how you design it. Uh, just going into the uploads tab, uploading your own photo, adding some text boxes, and then adding you know some, some layovers, some transparency in the elements tab, as well as if you wanted to use lines or any other shapes and designs. So you can always just search things in the search bar if you want to find them quicker until you learn how to navigate back and forth between these different tabs. So thanks for watching this video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you're not so you get notifications on new blogging tips, online business tips, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Yo, check this out. So if you type in asknickfoy.teachable.com, asknickfoy.teachable.com, when you hit enter, it's gonna open up my resource library. So I've been working on tons of training video modules and I put them together in these different courses. And you can go over here to asknickfoy.teachable.com and you can learn how to start a website that makes money. So this is called Profitable Blogger. You can also learn how to make money from social media like Pinterest. You can also learn real estate investing. So these are three ways I currently make money right now. I'm making six, $7,000 a month. I've already come out with a video showing you how I was making 1,400 a week a little while back. And we're on pace to eventually get to 10K a month passive income through websites, through social media, and through real estate investing. So these three methods combined, I created these three training courses. You can go here to asknickfoy.teachable.com to check them out. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the inside when you enroll in them. Yo, before you go, make sure you are subscribed to the channel, Nick Foy TV. If you hover the lower right corner of your video right now, you're gonna see the little red subscribe button. When you hover that, it's gonna pop up that subscribe button and it would mean a lot. I already appreciate you gave me your time, your attention today. Uh, but if you could also hit that subscribe button, support the channel and uh, smash the like button, as they all say in every YouTube video. So smash the like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.